This is the Fit Femmes Movement. Have you felt overwhelmed with your fitness journey? I feel like you just want to give up. Are you a busy female professional or entrepreneur looking for weight loss and self-care solutions that you can squeeze into your hectic schedule? Then you're in the right place. Let's get inspired to make fitness and healthy living improve rather than consume your life. Together, we'll take major strides towards a happier, healthier, even wealthier you. I'm Julia Hickman, your host and coach. Hello, Fit Femmes. How is everybody? I'm just gonna pull this up in the group so that I Hickman, I am the um, the founder of the Fascinista of the Petite Fascinista.com and the Fascinista Online Studio. And I am the creator of this free group, the Fit Femmes Tribe, uh, where really I try to connect with busy working women, career moms, female entrepreneurs who want to get fit, they want to have some nutrition help, but they don't have all the time. They don't have time to waste. They um, they want something that's going to save them time, save them sanity, and um, give them the freedom to be able to spend their time with their loved ones. So if that is you, you are in the right place, and I'm very happy to have you. So tonight what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about an interesting um, philosophy called intuitive eating. And I came across intuitive eating many, many years ago, actually, but I feel like it really has become a thing um, over the past couple of years when we've learned so much about things like mindfulness um, and intuition. And there's a lot more, you know, in the wellness field, there's been a, a whole um, almost like awakening of just some of the woo, right? And I personally love it because I've always had an interest. I've always felt very intuitive myself. And um, I love using some of the practices in my personal life and in my business. And um, I've just seen the great things that, that it can do for people. So. so intuitive eating really helps you become the expert in what your personal, bo what your personal body, your unique needs are and what you should give it. So it doesn't have you relying on any particular diet or way of eating because our personal preferences are really very unique, right? Like we all get stressed. We all get anxious about different things. Some things might, I mean, I might get stressed out about, um, uh, I get stressed out about having to drive places that I don't know. And you know, maybe, maybe you do too, but, some people are fine, you know, they're just like, all right, I'll just plug it into my GPS and I'm on my way. But for me, it's like, I get very stressed out, especially if I have my son in the car because like, he'll start talking to me, asking me questions and I'll get distracted. I'm like, oh, did I make the right turn or am I lost? So that's something like, like gives me anxiety. Um, so things like that, you know, um, we're all, we're all like our levels, um, our stress levels are different. So let's talk about the different principles. So I shared, um, I shared an ebook that I created um, and it was called the T 10 key principles um, of intuitive eating. So uh, I shared it in the group. I don't know if you had a chance to download it, um, but if you would like a copy of it, I'm happy to send it to you. Just let me know, um, just let me know. Uh, hi Steph and hi Nicole, are you guys watching? Say hello, wave. If you are, um, so I'm happy to send it to you and I'm just going to be scrolling through to make sure that I don't miss any of the key points, but principle number one, um, talks about ditching the diet mentality. And if you guys have been a part of my community for some time now, you know that I am not about the diets. Like I dislike diets. I feel like diets should all go away. Um, because I feel like even though they may work temporarily, they really do more harm than good. Um, 
when people tend to think that they need to go on diets again and again in order to lose weight and look better and that and this and that, it ends up causing disordered eating. We feel like we can't even like look at certain foods because, oh, that's bad and I can't have that. I can't have that at all. I can't have that around me. Um, so I really, when I work with people, with my clients, I really work with them to ditch the diet mentality. And that is, like I said, it's that mentality that they have to eat zero sugar, zero carbs. Um, they can only eat sweet potatoes. They can only eat, you know, this or that. They have to go vegetarian. No, no. Unless there is a medical reason for you to cut out certain foods, I don't, I don't really think that you need to. I think that you need to be mindful of what you're consuming and the amounts. Um, and we need to put into practice some of these things that I'm gonna be talking about tonight. So ditching the diet mentality. So it's about really um, not having to rely on external factors that can disconnect you from the wisdom of your own body and your own intuition. So your mind and mind body connection is very, very, um, there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. And if you learn to tune in, you can really, really learn to like trust your body and make the right decisions for it. And this also goes to say, and I might be jumping the gun here a little bit where this might fit better in another, um, in another one of the principles, but sometimes you might see like a friend of yours, a colleague, a neighbor, they tried something and it worked for them, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you because again, we are all so different, okay? So that is principle number one. Principle number two is to honor your hunger. So it means like if you're hungry, you should eat. <laughs> if you're hungry, get yourself some fuel. Um, now before, before you go and grab whatever the first thing is that you have in front of you, if it's like a box of donuts, uh, make sure that you're not thirsty. So first, before you even grab anything to eat, anything edible, try to see if by drinking some water, by hydrating yourself, maybe that feeling of hunger, maybe it goes away. Uh, especially if it's not like your normal time of eating. So if it's like 11 o'clock and you still have another couple hours before you normally eat lunch and you're all, all of a sudden you're feeling hungry, um, are you perhaps just thirsty? Maybe you haven't drank any water at all yet that morning, which I know a lot of you working women don't drink enough water. Um, so yeah, hydrate yourself first. If you're still hungry, wait like 20 minutes. And then if you're still hungry, then grab something as nutritious as you can. Try to avoid the sugary stuff. But, um, you know, especially if you work in an office, you, you may want to have something that's convenient, um, something you can keep in a, in a drawer in your, in your desk, things like dried fruit, nuts. They're all very simple things that you can store, um, in your desk at work. Uh, okay. So yeah, so we want to, we want to honor that hunger. We want to recognize that we are hungry. Our body's telling us I need some fuel. So we want to, we want to give it what it needs. Okay. So principle number three is to make peace with food. So this can, we ha might have to think about why we're not at peace with food, right? Because maybe it's, maybe it's the way we were raised. Maybe it's the way, um, you know, maybe our own moms, our own grandmothers, the women in our lives, they may have had a lot of struggles maybe with their weight. Um, and you know, they had, they got, they had good, they had good intentions, right? But talking, um, maybe talking badly about their bodies, um, we are we are programmed to kind of absorb that, especially if we were around this when we were young. Um, then we kind of internalize those things, and then we we think the same way that they thought. So we we keep on um, we continue those same thinking patterns. Um, so. You know, so it's, if somebody in your family always said like, oh, you know, cookies are bad, so we don't keep cookies around, or mm, ice cream is bad, you know, things like that, then you might have those same similar thoughts, those similar opinions, right? So 
It's also important to remember that the more that you tell yourself that you can't have something or that you shouldn't have something, the more that you're likely to want it because we are humans and we are prone to temptation. So if we are told that we can't do something, we're going to want to do it, right? Um, so it's also important because the more you deprive yourself of something, the more that you're going to want to binge on it later on. So if you have a really bad day, really stressful day, and you've been saying no to sweets, all of a sudden you find a box of cookies, you're going to be grabbing some. Okay, take a quick sip here. So how can you, you know, if you know that you are trying to stay away from the sugar, but you really want that cookie, you really want to have that Christmas cookie that you spent hours decorating with your nieces or nephews or kids. Um, so enjoy one. Just don't have like a whole bunch. Don't make the cookies your meal, right? Make that make that the little the the little. Um, I'm gonna get corny, but make that little ornament on the tree, right? If the tree is your meal, and then the cookie is the ornament. The little the little um, decoration that just gives the little spark, right? But you don't want you don't want um, the cookies to be the, your entire Christmas tree. Uh, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a silly silly example, but thinking in the holiday spirit here. Um, so if you're watching, make sure that you guys say hi. I like to say hello when people say hi. Um, not gonna go out on you, uh, but. If you would like to just say hi um, or click the like button, that would be great. Okay, we're gonna move on to principle number four. So principle number four is about labeling foods. So I talked a little bit about this, but saying that foods are good or bad. And this can be kind of tricky to do and it goes back to the way that we were raised, right? The way we were brought up. If we were brought up to think that we have to eat salad for lunch because that is, that's how, that's what healthy people do. They eat salad. Um, healthy people don't eat ice cream, you know, not even like twice a week. That's just not what they do. Ice cream is bad. Um, salad is, only salad is good. Though That type of thinking, again, goes back to that diet mentality and it, it creates that disordered eating and um, it doesn't really help us in the long run. So when we label foods as good or bad, and yes, there are such things as healthier foods and not so healthy foods, definitely. I'm not gonna deny that, right? We're not gonna say that, um, we're not gonna say that candy canes are as healthy as um, apples, right? But we don't have to say that they're necessarily bad because having one candy cane a couple times over the Christmas season, it's not gonna hurt anybody unless, you know, unless they really, really can't have that, right? Um, you know, I'm not talking about somebody who's like pre-diabetic or something, but for most people, it's not going to be the end of the world, right? So <clears throat> that's principle number four. So principle number five is to respect your fullness and Actually, I'm gonna jump to principle number six, which is discover your satisfaction factor. So these are pretty much the same thing. So you wanna respect your fullness. So this again, requires you to kind of tune into yourself. It requires you to slow down. Um, so when you're eating, and I know that this can be tough. I know that this is not easy to do every day, whether you're a busy, you know, professional at work and you have minimal time to eat, maybe you're just shoveling, trying to shovel food at your desk, or you're the parent of, of, of small children and you're trying to take care of them while you're trying to get some food in yourself as well. Um, but really like taking, making sure first of all that we're sitting down to eat. So we're not like walking around eating, making sure that you're sitting down, making sure that you can look at your food that you can by looking down that you can observe what is in front of you try to think about where it came from where did this grass-fed beef come from where did these um, potatoes come from um, try to think of the process maybe that the farmer went through to 
um, to grow his crops, to bring it over to, to the store, wherever you got it, or to the farmer's market. And, um, you know, just take that extra second to like appreciate where your food came from. Um, look at all the different colors, smell the smells. So by taking that extra like few seconds to just really fully enjoy whatever is in front of you, you're already like gonna prevent yourself from like just shoveling it all in without really enjoying it. So taking the time also to take small, um, slow bites, right? So again, I know it's not always easy to not try to get it in as quickly as you can when you're trying to chase little ones or, you know, you got to get to a meeting at work, but trying to make that a priority to do that as often as you can. Um, it goes a long way. And when you do that, when you make that a habit, then what happens is you can really check in with yourself better to be able to, to, be able to know when you are close to being full. So here's the thing, guys, we want to be able to stop eating before we're like 100% full. Because what happens is we're like 100% full, but they're like, we're like, oh, I think we have a little more room and we take a few more bites. And then we're like, oh, why did I eat so much? Now oh, my stomach, oh, my stomach hurts or oh, I just feel so bloated. So if you can stop when you're about like 80-ish percent full, you have a better chance of like actually eating until you are, um, you're at like your satisfaction factor. Because let's just say you take a couple other bites or, you know, you want a couple bites of dessert, then you still, you, your stomach is not, it's not going to feel so, so stuffed. You're not going to have that like awful feeling of just being like, oh, I, I over ate, I overdid it again. So I hope this is making sense. If you have any comments so far, you guys are so quiet. Can you guys say hi? Can you guys, I don't know, put some kind of emoji or something. Um, all right, principle number seven is to honor your feelings without using food. So talked a little bit about stress and anxiety and you know some of the things that we might go through and food is usually um, a quick way of trying to make ourselves feel better. Right, like the comfort foods, um, the sweets, the uh, um, the processed stuff, you know, all that stuff. It, it it's it's instant gratification, right? Um, again, we are known to seek kind of things like that, right? Uh, so so what do we do instead, right? So again, like, and this is why I always say to people who want to work with me. It's like, we have to work on your mindset before we can ever make any bigger improvements in your health. Because if, if somebody's still stuck in that diet mentality, the all or nothing mentality, the, this is bad, this is good mentality, then it's so hard to be able to make them make lasting results because we're either trying to do things perfectly all the time. And then they feel bad about themselves. They, have negative thoughts about themselves, they um, give up on themselves, and they're in that constant like cycle of repeating things again and again. So if we can learn to change our mindset, and that means waking up in the morning and saying, I am, I'm loved, I am beautiful, I am worthy, whatever it is that you need to hear, whatever it is that you know you are, um, you need to make that your, your daily way of thinking. Because if you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I, you know, I'm so forgetful or I, I don't know why I do this all the time. How do I do that all the time? I'm so like stupid. I'm, oh, then you know what? Like that's going to be the way things are for you because you are like brainwashing yourself to think that that's the way you are. Um, and to, to share a little bit more with you guys, like the past couple of years have been really kind of tough. Um, I won't go into it too much, but oh, there's my husband walking in the background. Um, but um, so I, this, this year, has been a year where I had to like really get back in tune with myself and 
remember like who I am and I'm somebody who doesn't freaking like give up easily I you know there's I we can talk about this another time but um you know, we have to remember who we are. We have to remember who, like, who the hell are you? Um, you are worthy. You are loved. People give up so easily sometimes. And, you know, I get this. I hear this. Um, what's the word? You know, either people work with me and then they're thinking about continuing, but they're not sure. Or somebody who, who reaches out to me and they're like, oh, I, I think I want to work with you. But then they're like, oh... Oh, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And it's like, usually it's not that they really can't afford it. It's usually that they don't think that they deserve it. It's either they think they don't deserve it or because they have, they had failed before with something else, maybe not even fitness related. Um, or they feel like they're not worthy. They're like, Oh, why, why, why would I, why would I spend money on my health like that? No, no, I, but we spend money on so many other things that are worthless. Um, and like spending money on our health, improving ourselves, improving, improving our lives impacts everybody around us. And the healthier we are, the fitter we are, it, it like, it will, it will change your life when you learn to do it the right way. When you learn to do it, in a way that is efficient and doesn't take hours and hours and doesn't take away your chocolate or your wine, it's life changing. And I've had clients, I've had clients, you know, also tell me like, oh, I'm too, um, I'm too busy. So I can start, you know, can, can I start, you know, in another month? And I'm like, life is always going to be busy. So if you can't learn to start, slower if you need to then things are going to be really difficult for you because you're always going to be giving up on yourself you're always going to be coming up with excuses whether it's the money excuse or it's the time excuse i mean those are the two big ones um but then there's the people who are like you know what i i deserve this and i'm going to do this for myself because because i'm an intelligent woman and i don't need to waste my time um I need somebody to help me. I need somebody to guide me. And, you know, my time is very precious. Um, I have had clients, like I had one client, Kara, who trained with me um, earlier in the year. And she trained with me during, her, like, the busiest time in her, in her industry and in her work. And <clears throat> there were weeks where she wasn't able to do all the workouts. And she even told me, she's like, She's like, I'm pretty amazed that I had such amazing results considering that I like didn't always do all the workouts and I definitely didn't like do all the recipes. Um, but she, you know, she lost so many inches. So being able to change your mentality, being able to realize who you are, right? You're a badass. You are worthy and you need to tell yourself that. Okay, so moving on. Principle number eight is to respect your body. And this kind of goes back to, to uh, principle number seven, right? Like if we are honoring our body, we're going to do the best that we can to take care of it. Um, we need to appreciate it. And we, learn to, we need to learn how to fuel it the right way. Whether it means, you know, you take everything that I've been teaching you, whether it's tonight or whether it's, you know, if you've been here for months and you've learned a lot from my, my live streams um you know you can do it you can totally do it but you just you have to do it you can't just like sit back and listen to me talk you actually have to like put this into practice um okay so principle number nine is to exercise so movement is very important right like nutrition is a big piece of the puzzle but exercise is also very important so if you've been like eating very healthy but you're not seeing results you need to change something in your in your movement um, routine so whatever it is that you're doing is probably not the most efficient thing or vice versa so um, with my philosophy you know I totally believe and I've seen and I've helped 
hundreds of people now, by now, men and women now, if we combine some of the CrossFit people that I've trained and I've trained people at my college when I was in college. But, you know, it doesn't need to take hours and hours and hours to get in shape. You can do 10 to 20 minute workouts a few times a week. And if you combine it with smart eating, you can definitely get in shape. You can get toned. You can get nice, clean muscle. Um, so it doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to require a lot of your time, but you do need to do it. Okay. So principle number 10 now is to honor your health. Um... So for this principle, what I just wanted to stress is that you don't need to eat a perfect diet. So you don't need to have a smoothie and a salad and broccoli and grilled chicken every day to be healthy. That's great if you can eat like that every now and then. That's awesome. But it just means like doing the best that you can. I And I. Honestly, I feel like if you if you focus on vegetables and lean protein and then some carbs, right? You don't want to cut out carbs unless you unless you really have to, for again some medical reason. Um, and watch your portion, right? Like just watch your portion control. Listen to your hunger cues, right? Make sure that you're drinking enough water because a lot of people are not drinking enough water. So. Having one treat every once in a while is not going to is not going to destroy your your um, your progress, but it's what you do consistently over time that's really going to matter. Okay, so to I'm just going to recap here. So the ten key principles are to ditch the diet mentality. Right. Number two is to honor your hunger. Number three is to make peace with food. Number four is to stop labeling food as good or bad. Five is to respect your fullness. Six is to find your satisfaction factor. Uh, uh, sorry, seven is to honor your feelings. Honor your feelings without food. Eight is to respect your body. Nine is to exercise. And 10 is to honor your health. So now you have, you have the power now. You have these great tips um, and strategies that I've given you over the past 30 minutes. Um, so you can go out and put these into action now. And you can start eating healthier without worrying about whatever diet, whatever so-and-so is doing. You can do what works for you. You can slow down. Eat more mindfully. Listen to your intuition, listen to your body, and then do what it asks, right? You're going to be so much happier. You're going to feel, feel less stressed. You're not going to have such a bad relationship with food. You're going to be okay having the occasional treat and not feeling so bad about it because you know that you're making good decisions, like 90% of the time. Thank you for listening to the Fit Femmes Movement. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast, so please leave us a review. And sharing is caring. If you know someone who may benefit from this episode, please share it with them. We need more women up-leveling to their highest selves with grace, courage, and ease. If you'd like to connect with me more and have access to free live trainings and join a community of hundreds of other amazing women, then join my free Facebook group, The Fit Femmes Tribe.